time to move on to Whitchurch. We've been around Renbury for two weeks, which was the maximum time we could stay here. And now we're on the Langochlan Canal, which means we're heading to Wales, which I'm so pumped for. And everyone on this canal keeps saying, once you get to Whitchurch, everywhere from there is just absolutely beautiful. I mean, I've thought this whole canal so far has been pretty amazing, but the fact that now a few people have said, oh, wait till you get past Whitchurch, we're like, all right, let's go. Lauren's gone back to get the car. So she's going to drive to the lock. I think there's about seven or eight locks. And I think she might literally do a lot, get in the car, drive to the next lock the whole way. Because <laughs> then we've got the car close to us, which will be great. And um, we're going to meet up with Ben and Emily, who are another young boat couple. They've also got a YouTube channel. They actually quite inspired us to get into YouTube. I'm going to link their uh, YouTube channel in the description to this. And yeah, they're going to come over for dinner tonight. So yeah, it's going to be a really great day. Excited. Hello, I'm Adam. I'm Lauren. And this is Shanti. We all live together on board our 59 foot narrowboat. Join us as we show you what our day to day life is like living on the British waterways. Ducks just kind of watching me cruise by. Morning, guys. This was an exciting cruise as we knew we had two more locks to do before arriving at the well-known Grinley Brook staircase. What are you getting all excited about in there, huh? <laughs> what are they called? What are they called? Uh, no, I've got it. I've got a pastel natter. <laughs> you forgot about it, didn't you? From yesterday. I bought it yesterday because I wanted it yesterday and then I forgot to eat it. arrived at the Grinley Brook staircase. A set of three locks all joined together which require a different operating method to the usual locks we were used to. We had heard it was common for the Canal and River Trust volunteers to be present at the staircase and thankfully we were welcomed by Trevor and Tony. I'm Trevor and that's my colleague Tony. Give us a wave Tony. <laughs> Tony's a lovely chap, he's an excellent lock keeper but you've got to keep your eye on your wallet all the time. So what are we going to be doing on these locks? Uh, we're, going, we're walking up here now and we're going to... So what we've got is three chambers, one, two and three at the top. Um, but there's only four gates. So this set of gates here 
is the top gates of the bottom chamber, but the bottom gates of the middle chamber. You need to see it and then it will all become clear. <laughs> say, hope everyone got that. You two are right down there. <laughs> so, what's happening now, this chamber is full of water and by operating these paddles here, uh, the water in this chamber is transferred into the one below to fill the chamber and as the, when the water levels are equal, we'll be able to open the gates and then the, then the boat moves through this chamber, we shut the gates behind it and we go on to the next one. There, ahead of you, you can see the top chamber. So you see, I'm keeping that safety catch on there and I'm listening for the click because if that catch is on, if I suddenly lose control of that, the, the, the catch clicks on and it's not going anywhere. If I try and throw it off like that and I lose control of this, the, the paddle will whiz down to the bottom because of gravity and it'll break something. And just so everyone knows he's saying that because I did it completely wrong on the last lock when I just met him. <laughs> I, think, I think completely wrong is a slight exaggeration. <laughs> I've become complacent, we realised. I used to have better practice with locks than I do now. There we go. <laughs> You've got to concentrate when you're operating these locks. It's quite easy to make a mistake and get water everywhere. Well, Trevor, I'm very happy you're here. <laughs> <laughs> We're basically currently stuck on the sill so down here. He's letting the water through now. Well, can you see the boat rising at the front? Yes, I can. OK, you're afloat now. Lovely. Perfect, so we just let a bit more water through because we were stuck on that sill. So now Lauren should be able to. <laughs> She's going forward, but the boat's going back. Because the water would have pushed her back. And she's entering. And she's in number two. Honestly, what would we have done without these guys? He's trying to get Lauren's thumb, it's in her own world. Lars! The reason I need a thumbs up from the skipper is because I need to know they're paying attention because they've got to control the boat in the lock. And if we suddenly let a load of water through, the boat will, what happens is the water goes underneath the boat, hits the back of the lock and then comes forward again, bringing the boat with it and bang into my gates. So I'm not bothered about the boat, but I don't want my lock to <laughs> Too right, you look after those gates. Yep, they're 220 years old, this, this uh, flight of locks. Wow. And this here, these are new, but this stanchion, this bracket here, is the original piece of equipment. So when would that have been built? That was installed in about 1796. Wow. And it still works today. Now we're going into the top chamber, the last and final step. What's actually been a very informative experience. I've also just been told that this house here was built when the canals were. It's where the lock people would live. And they put this window looking right out onto the lock so he could check when there was a boat coming so he could run out and get his money. So how long have you been doing this, Trevor? Um, I've been a volunteer for eight years uh, and um, I work on this flight, the Grinley Brook Staircase, the Hurlston flight uh, and the Alden flight on the Shropshire Union main line. Um, I also do some in the winter when there's no boats about. Um, I've got other jobs I do for the Trust. What draws you to wanting to help them so much? Um, well, this is a free gym. We're walking up and down all the time and raising and lowering the locks. It keeps me out of the pub. Um, and uh, also, it keep, I mean, I've had to sell my boat, so I'm not able to do it anymore. So it, I, I'm keeping in touch with the, with the network. So I've been on boats all my life. Um, and I feel I'm giving something back to the, to the history, keeping the history going. Well, thank you so much for your help today. It's been a well. pleasure to meet you. Okay, we'll send you the bill on. <laughs> After we left the Grindley Brook staircase, we still had two more locks to do. The wind started to pick up quite a lot, which can really affect how easy it is to control our boat, meaning we have to be extra mindful and help out other boaters that may need it. Lauren's just trying to get into the lock, but there's this crazy gush of water that comes out. 
I think it's called the wash and it really pushes the boat so you've kind of got to go in the opposite way and really put the revs on I think she's going to crash into that wall though let's see there we go they say it's the contacts fault <laughs> We're over getting annoyed when we knock and bang the boat, it's just part of it now. Just moored up outside the lock because we're waiting for another boat to go down. I think it's a wharf and we've just seen this. Got no idea what it is. Sorry, Lauren's just regurgitating in the corner. <laughs> is it like an old, Lauren reckons, what did you say? It was an old no, printing. She thought it was a printing machine. No, she said she, now she was fibbing. Does anyone know what this is? We'd love to know. Also, we love to see this outside the lock. Someone must have chickens in their garden. So you can get six eggs for 150 and three apples. Maybe we can make an apple crumble. I'm gonna take a few actually. Three windfall cookers, cooker apples. That's great. We're gonna make a crumble now with these. So I'm about to go into the engine. Um, about six weeks ago, we had the engine fixed. Uh, we spent nearly a thousand pounds to get the head gasket changed, replaced, um, and also we needed to fix some leaks as well. We had a diesel leak uh, that needed to be fixed. Something that I wanted to do myself, um, but whilst this guy is doing the head gasket, I thought he can do it, <laughs> basically. After getting those things fixed, I didn't get a chance to really go under the engine. Um, to clean it because <clears throat> there was a lot of oil, water and diesel in there. Um, I cleaned part of it but not all of it. So yeah, I'm kind of hoping that there's only a little bit of oil in there. And yeah, let's go and find out how much there is under there. So it's time to lift the wood to look inside the engine. Moment of truth to see how mucky it is down there. Oh my God. Hey. It's probably not ideal. It's kind of swimming. Fucking hell. Is that a lot worse than you were expecting? Yeah. Well, I wasn't expecting anything to be in that bit or that bit. So it used to always be in there, but because we've just spent a lot of money to get it fixed, the idea was that it was only going to get kind of caught in this plastic bucket. Oh my bucket. God, so basically the engine's not fixed. So that was a good a thousand pounds worth spent, wasn't it, Bob? <laughs> oh, so annoying. It'll be okay. So I'm basically going to clean it again, and then again, and again, and again. I don't mind doing it once in between that. <laughs> Just the once. <laughs> For ten seconds. Ah! Let it out. Ah! Let it out. Ah! Feel better? No. <laughs> First of all, I want to get everything from underneath the engine and then we'll work on the sides maybe either the day. Yeah. There's a lot more than I was expecting, so it's making me think that there are still leaks. Where are they coming from? It's really tough with the engine because we try and do everything ourselves, but this is why we're always reluctant to spend out, like spending that a thousand pounds and to still have all these leaks. <laughs> I mean, you know what though? I thought there was a diesel leak and I can't feel, I, it doesn't seem like there is. Well, this is also what's tricky with oil because the, the color, you never know. It could be mainly water and a little bit of oil that turns it black. That's always the tricky well, bit, isn't like it? The oil sits on the top, so that is probably mainly water and there's like a teeny bit of oil on top. So luckily we have this pump contraption that works quite well. I can never remember which end goes in which end. So I'm going to try that one. The kind guy on a boat next to us gave us this drum. oil drum. So that's one thing why we can sometimes can't pump it out because we never know where to put it. So one of the sides of the pipe goes in the oil slash water slash whatever else is leaking in there. Oh, hi Shanti. And the other side goes in the drum. And then we pump. We're in business. 
Hey Shanti, you can have a go as well, you can help us out. So, five minutes later, look how much is filled. Can you see that? That is insane. I think we're going to need two of these. My turn to fill the second half. Yes, please. Adam's now giving it a go. Yes, it's filling up. So we're not sure why, um, but the pump has stopped working. It's working when we're testing it in the water, in the clean water, but it's not working the same way it's been working to get this oil out. So we're getting a bit annoyed and we've got rid of half. So I think definitely it, looking a bit better. I think might, we might, what we might do is find like a little jug that we can just scoop the rest out. I guess it doesn't matter if there's a little bit in there as long as it's not spilling. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I think that's it. It's getting dark now as well, so we can't barely see anything. Just when we thought we were done, Lauren found a new tactic. Good old Heinz baked beans can. It's probably quicker than the pump in itself. Yeah, and actually, I feel like there's a lot of... Can you see that? All those little bits of thick. So that's getting stuck in the pump, I basically. I think that's what's getting stuck in the pump. <laughs> so after all of that hard work with the engine um we we didn't have the time to cook <laughs> so adam has been a very kind gentleman and he's going to the fish and chip shop aren't you babe yeah let's get chips and mushy peas no not mushy peas chips and curry sauce chips and curry sauce okay see you got have you got your money yeah all right see you in a bit then babe love you Thank you so much for watching this week. Please let us know what you think in the comments below and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much also to everybody who's bought us a coffee this week. Thank you to Diane, thank you to Will, thank you to Jane. Thank you to Sharon, thank you to Leia and thank you to Jules. Jules, sorry Jules. <laughs> we tried to remember the name. We did quite well. I think we did. So thank you so, so, so much. Thanks again. It means so very much to us. Yes. See you next See week. You. Say bye Shanti. Bye everybody.